Okay, welcome back. And uh, we're looking at, um, you know, the statement to uh, the public and the press briefing of the INEC chairman to the effect that around 600 um, ongoing court cases will be hampering uh, its efforts at pre preparing for the election. It, it's uh, the chairman said, for instance, that uh, vital time is going to need to be expended on these matters that have been brought up. Uh, and this, additionally, will be affecting the uh, Commission's procurement of sensitive materials and all other things necessary. Um, so to, from that extent, you say that INEC is the co-author of the situation we find on our hands. Let me quickly correct, um, very quickly, correct an impression um, my sister Cynthia may have um, had about my own feeling towards INEC. I did not say that INEC should disobey court orders. No. I did not say that INEC should not be involved in matters where they are joined. I did not say that INEC should not do something and I will just sit, lay by. Right, but if you say but, all but of I that, am if, saying, you, if you say all of that, yes, then it's yes. going to be time consuming. I am saying they'll that be expending time, which they say is very, very scarce. Look, they are all part of the electoral process. All part of the electoral process. INEC has various departments. Legal is one of them. Issues that concern law court is, is the purview of the legal department. If they don't have enough lawyers, they should engage more lawyers, either on full time or on part time basis. So they, they, they should not have any complaint. My own point is that there is no way the chairman will convince me that those cases will hamper INEX preparation for election. There's no way. Yes, you can say it's a distraction. It will be distracting the legal department, not the operations department. The operations department and all other departments in INEC. INEC has various departments, up to six directorates mm -hmm. of them. Mm -hmm. and meanwhile, don't forget that even monitoring the activities of political parties is part of INEC uh, responsibility. INEC has the responsibility to, it is that responsibility that they had, that, or that power and authority that they had, that made them to deregister other political parties and shrink the number from 97 it used to be to effective 24 or thereabout, and 18 are going for election. And if eventually 18 are going for election, that means uh, Nigeria has effectively 18 political parties. So there is no excuse let, whatsoever let, 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 from let, let, INEC. Okay. Yes, much as, let, I, let, much as I want to join and, uh, 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 Cynthia's presentation that politicians must play by the rules. Okay. But what are the laws? The laws are there to tame those who go outside the rules. Let, let me bring, uh, uh, Cynthia, before I come to you, let me bring Ada in. Uh, Ada is calling in from Joss. Good morning, Ada. Go ahead, please. Uh, yeah, they're calling from just as you said. Um, uh, good morning to your guests there. You know, um, Mr. Yoder, let me tell you something. An average Nigerian lawyer would want too many cases uh, to to uh, to buttress the the local parliament saying man must work. If not, what 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 are we talking about? <laughs> it's a shame as far as I'm concerned that uh, there are political parties due to lack of uh, internal party democracy. That's why we have so much, so too many litigations. The, uh, the court have to decide up to 600 cases or even more. You know, it's a shame if you ask me. It's a madhouse. You know, it's a it's like INEC. As much as your guest is saying that uh, INEC is not in all that, but uh, what, what I don't understand is that where we have uh, where we have uh, a functional, functional democracy, why must INEC? Since we have rules, why must INEC? I mean, those uh, primary they did not even supervise. Why? Uh, why? Why? Why is it giving attention? Why? Why can't we start from there in the first instance? Then again, um, let, let them look, look, uh, take a look at our, uh, the electoral laws. Must all the cases go to Supreme Court? And uh, you call the Supreme Court. Let, 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 them, let, let some of them end at the appeal court. You know? And then as much as uh, the, the, there was one time I saw one human headline, God is ordered to prioritize uh, pre-election cases. You remember that as much as they, they have to now, uh, uh, you know, they have to abandon other cases. Other cases will suffer. You know, so why have this workload of uh, work uh, uh, load on them? Things that could be affected. At least you have a minimal number. Then the retired judges, those who retired uh, meritoriously, let them uh, engage them. You know, so, uh, I don't know. We have to. They, they have to wake up the way they are behaving. INEC has too many things. So too many things they are burdened with. Look at now, the, many of their officers are set ablaze and all that. They, they cannot. They can't even fortify the place. No security. 
What the hell is going on? So you no, no, everything is falling upside down in Nigeria. All this, let's not give up on this country. All that I did, you know it now. All that I did, Mark. Thank you very much for calling in. Uh, uh, Cynthia, uh, as you've heard, um, Barrister Fred Nziako insists on his uh, earlier position that if it was a matter of apportioning blame, um, he, he feels that INEC can't escape, you know, from, you know, the way he sees it, it being contributory uh, to this uh, situation that we find ourselves in. Ada in just there was even suggesting that, look, the, the legal community itself, it likes this kind of quote-unquote confusion. And so it is encouraging it, uh, both from one side and then from the other. Uh, there's uh, Fred in Zayako saying, INEC is, uh, you know, you yourself, I didn't even introduce you as a lawyer. I don't know if you are, but you certainly, you know, uh, are quite knowledgeable uh, about the matter. So it looks like, well, uh, you are looking at it from uh, INEC's point of view. Uh, you know, go, go ahead and uh, give me your commentary on the situation uh, that we have, especially against the backdrop of Barrister Nziako saying that he, you can't convince him that INEC is actually suffering uh, a, a distraction. As he said, employ more lawyers. Put more lawyers on the case, and uh, you continue with the core function. Let the lawyers be continuing with the legal function. How would you respond to that, uh, uh, Cynthia? Yeah, um, thanks. And like I said, it's always good listening to him. Um, I, and honestly, from what Barrister is saying, I see our points of convergence, but I also see that we have some points of divergence, which is required, which is normal. It's part of discussions. We can't all agree, but we agree to disagree. And I agree on the point where um, what which he has made, which are, is also my position, um, that when it's time to hold the electoral commission accountable, we hold them accountable. So we cannot also create excuses for INEC and say it cannot conduct elections or prepare for elections because it has cases. So where it is time to hold them accountable, at the point of we hold them accountable, and where the responsibility is on the parties, we hold the parties to account. So those that I feel like that is our point of convergence because okay. I still believe that INEC cannot um, now say because of these cases, it can't perform its functions. Why? Um, the law was clear on release of funds, funds to be released one year to the elections. INEC is an institution with several units and departments, and every unit and department has its responsibility. The national commissioners provide supervision and oversight over specific arms of elections administration. So there are those in charge of operations, there are those in charge of party monitoring and communications and what have you. So there are specific clarity when it comes to roles. Within the within the institution of INEC, so that that is that is in that that is important. That's an important point that we need to make. Now, on the conversation around, um, is this a distraction on INEC? I still believe it is a distraction, but I know that it's not a situation that we can solve now. But the fact is, a distraction doesn't mean it's an excuse for INEC to um, renegade on its responsibility. So that's the point, the clarity I need to make. Mm -hmm. um, now, on mm -hmm. en engagement, while INEC has a legal department with a team that engages on, this, on, this, on these cases, let us also remember that INEC has a budget that it works with. And it cannot just go on, on, a, whim, on a whim and start massive recruitment of lawyers just because a major challenge has been created by irresponsible police, by irresponsible political parties and politicians, or people who don't want to play by the rules. Because sometimes some candidates, some people in court, some aspirants are actually aggrieved, not because they have been wronged, but they've been wronged by the party that they belong to, not by the electoral commission. So mm. yes, it has a legal department that has its role. They engage on all the cases and um, it's also perhaps another conversation on maybe reviewing his budget. But should we start reviewing budgets to increase budget for legal, for the electoral commission, rather than increasing budgets for things like voter and civic education and things like um, elections operations and logistics? Because for me, what would make sense is that we look at the budget for INEC and seek for value in disbursements. We're looking for value for money here. Let us allocate resources to the things that bring and add more value to our democracy and promote credibility of the process, rather than allocating resources to deal with rascality of the political class that have refused okay. to play by the rules of 
Okay, so okay, Cynthia. Th thank you, Cynthia. So I, um, I, I want to apologize sorry. to Emmanuel in Otupo. I've held him up for so very long. Okay, uh, but, but good morning, uh, Emmanuel in Otupo. Please go ahead now. Emmanuel, are you still there? Emmanuel. Yes, good morning. Ah, good morning, sir. Uh, please go ahead yeah, now. I thank you. Thank you I for holding see. on all that while. You held on I for about see. three minutes. Uh, thank you very much. Uh, we have made a lot of uh, gains. We have achieved a lot in the course of our democracy. And I thank God for the, for the body, the electoral body, INEC. INEC has tried its best over the years. And it has filtered the bad eggs. And right now we have a very good INEC to some extent. So what you mean is the judiciary that is the problem of the country. The judiciary, I encourage them to listen to Mike Higgini, who has been appealing to them as his constituency to do the need to. Let them come up and respect the ethics of that profession so that all these uh, numerous, bogus, uh, humongous number of cases that they bring forward to intimidate INEC. INEC has gone beyond that. They are not intimidated. And I also want to appeal to the senior advocates of Nigeria who are interested in listing their things. Fine, boys. Please, money is good. But try to respect Nigeria. Try to be mindful of Nigeria. Be patriotic. Money is not everything. And if we are able, as we have gotten INEC, delivered INEC, redeemed INEC from the mess, if we are able to redeem the judiciary, the political parties and the politicians will have no choice but to behave themselves. They will behave themselves. And I, for the 2023 election, I have no fears whatsoever. I know it's going to end well. And the country will laugh and rejoice for it. God bless Nigeria. Thank, Thank you, you uh, very much, uh, Emmanuel, for calling in from Otupo, <laughs> and in particular for waiting, because I didn't want to interrupt uh, uh, Cynthia as she was speaking, uh, because I thought it was important to be hearing uh, sort of expert views. Yes, both yes you, 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 know why, so, you know why it is important we call out INEC when, 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 when there is need to call them out. There are, if there is a need. If, when there is need for, to call them out, there are development partners that donate funds towards our election from major parts of the world, from the developed parts of the world. And INEC cannot, in their good conscience, claim that paucity of fund is their major problem. Yes, there's no amount of money that will ever be enough, but it is proper deployment of such fund. The most critical aspect that INEC needs to look at is making a statement and standing by it. You recall that towards the, the primary election for the presidential uh, primaries of major INEC set a date and INEC shifted that date because of APC. What does it tell you? What it means is that those who it emboldened politicians, well, the, 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 the statement did, you just made that it did so because of a particular political party that is the, what is in the public space. Why did they do so? They set a timeline, all political parties were working toward that timeline. APC was not ready, INEC shifted the goalpost. And by so doing, it has emboldened politicians that they could pressure INEC and get away with it. Mm -hmm. And that is why many of them had been pressuring INEC. And they don't know, they might get away with it. And today, INEC will come and complain that there are 600 cases. No man goes to court knowing <laughs> fully well that he will lose. You only go to court when you have some percentage of confidence that you may that you may win, uh, then you go to court. Well, in, in Nigeria... And is giving them that confidence. In, in, in by Nigeria, as you know, people go to game. court, especially in the political space, people go to court knowing they don't have the chance of, uh, as uh, Hadi Chase would have put it, uh, a snowball in hell. How many they of still them go? They, that does not amount to the 600. If you go and they do a profiling of these Sunday mm -hmm. cases that Anek is complaining about, you will see the tardiness of Anek in all of them. Okay. Some of them were emboldened by the past activities of INEC. Okay. And the electoral management body is above every other person because it's an institution empowered by the constitution and the laws. Which is what INEC so tells that, us so that the, it strives to when be you, when at you, when every set, turn. When you set the Goalpost, don't shift it. Okay. No matter whose ox is got. Uh, 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 one moment, Cynthia, before I come to you. Reverend Dominic has called in. Good morning to you, sir. Good morning, Yori. Good morning to uh, Barisan Zako. Good morning to that uh, brilliant lady. Cynthia Mbamalo. 
Mbamalu, yeah. Let me say this, uh, Yori, and I want to disagree with the brilliant lady, and I agree with Barrison Zaku in this, in this way. The real lady is making a good point. But listen to me, Yori. FIFA, let me use this example. FIFA is not interested by the shenanigans of players on the field. The young boys that play football can put drama in the field. FIFA is interested on the umpire, the referee. Starting to say this is a red card, this is a yellow card. And this is what Barrison Zaku is saying here. The challenge here is not on the, it, it, it should not be to the politicians. Honestly, Nigerian politicians cannot change. Number two, Nigerian politicians cannot change. Number three, Nigerian politicians cannot change. This is why I want to disagree with the real lady. We shouldn't vote ourselves on things we cannot control. But we can control INEC. We can control the judges. Let me give you an example. If a man comes to court, but since that's not what I'm saying, and he brings this you know, unnecessary delay, that makes a judgment that, that uh, uh, you know, a matter that should end in one month, end in one year. A judge has the right to say, I give my judgment. Whether you favor it or not, you move to appeal. If the man in appeal sees that somebody is giving you unnecessary delay, he has the right to give you know, his judgment. If you don't please, you go to Supreme Court. And if it's too. Oh, dear. Um... Okay, I, I, I think I lost Reverend Dominic there. But um, uh, as, as you could hear, Cynthia, um, he, he also, you know, he, he seemed to be looking, I'm, I'm not too sure because he, he was cut off uh, suddenly, but uh, he seemed to yeah. be looking at the, polit the politicians themselves and, uh, you know, I think so. But you have said, and I, I, I particularly like that that came out because it gave us an insight that, look, look, she said it more than once. She's tired of, making excuses for politicians and uh, their parties. Uh, so if they, if they conduct themselves in a legal manner in the way in which they're expected to be, then we won't have half of these problems. Please go ahead, Cynthia. Yes, yes. I understand um, the sentiments of the caller. Um, but let us understand that the rules that govern the FIFA is not the rules that govern INEC. <laughs> Um, the electoral law, this is a new electoral act. I, and that's, I'm calling to everyone listening and watching, please get a copy of the new electoral. It's online. You can download it. Read it. Because we need to empower ourselves with information and knowledge. That's one part. Which is sometimes, but when we read it and go through the guidelines and look at the several, there was a um, code of conduct. Um, I have produced policies for party primaries conduct. There were several rules provided and produced. So it's important we also understand is that INEC doesn't have a decision to say, I, can, I don't want to be joined in court. That is a different situation because parties join them in court. But I, I think there was a point I was making, which is important we state here, is the role of the courts. And most times when we engage stakeholders, we don't think around the judiciary and the courts. But the courts are increasingly playing an important role in our elections. So it's time we begin to also hold them accountable. And I agree with him on the part that judges should also, they have a responsibility to look at the merits of a case and understand if this case should stand. Like one of the learned um, um, just judges, justices who say at the, at, the, at the time, the court is not a father Christmas to grant everyone their wishes. Meaning that if people come to courts with a case that has no merit, that lacks in merit. The court has the power to say, no, this case has lacks in merit. It's not yet to grant you wishes. It's not for that Christmas. And I think it's important our courts, our courts understand that they truly are the last hope of the ordinary citizen. Meaning that if parties flog your, your courtroom with cases, look through it, and the ones that lack merit, we know what to, the courts know what to do with that. And also reducing the timeline at which decisions are taken. We all follow the Kenyan elections. There was post-election litigation. Within weeks, the Supreme Court gave its judgment on that election and, the, and, 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 and upheld the, the elections. Within weeks, I followed that and I read, followed the judgment of the Supreme Court in Kenya. And I, and I wish and believe, not just wish, I believe that our Nigerian judiciary has that important role to play in in also reducing some of these uh, menaces within the system. Okay. But One, it's not every case that deserves to be. There are cases you look to the lack of merit. Let us know how to classify those cases. And let us also reduce, let the courts reduce the timeline in the certain case. Because if they do that, it also empowers INET to continue with its, with its, with its, with, um, its, um, its uh, mandate to administer the elections. Okay. So that's the part. And I believe he was making that point. And it's good we call out the courts now and begin to hold them accountable in this, our elections. The other part is the... Well, well, I'm, sorry, I'm sorry, Cynthia. I'm sorry, Cynthia. We've run out 
out of time. Uh, I'm so sorry, but uh, we're going to have to leave it there. And I want to thank you very much, uh, Cynthia Mbamalu. Uh, you know, uh, she's uh, uh, director of programs at Yaga Africa. Yaga Africa being a civil society organization promoting uh, participatory uh, democracy. It evolved out of a student uh, uh, organization way back in 2007 at the University of Joss. Just in case you're wondering, what is Yaga Africa? Thank you very much. Cynthia. It's just Yaga Africa. It's not an acronym. It's just Yaga yes, Africa. Yes, it's just Yaga. It's not an acronym. Thank you very much for your time this morning. And, uh, Thank you. Yeah. Barista Fred Nziako, to, to, to wrap it up, you've been insistent on the point that, look, what needs to be said needs to be said, and you feel that INEC cannot... Yes, yes, itself. because there are stakeholders in the election process. The yeah. INEC as a literal management body. The, the security agencies, the political parties, and the politicians. Sure. So you cannot just heave the blame on the political parties and leave INEC. All of them should be called out. All right, then. Thank you very much, Barrister Fred okay, Nziako, uh, a lawyer and development economist. Thank you very much Many for coming thanks. on the program. Okay, and also thanks to those who were able to call in. Uh, thank you very much. Uh, please join us. Uh, the next edition of the program, which is on Monday morning at 11. Do have a great weekend. I am Yori Folarin. Bye-bye for now.